chemistry. Uh, apologize for moving time around on everybody. Um, hopefully this will be the last time you have to hear me talk this week. Uh, we're going to be looking today at this uh, radioactive decay simulation. Now this is not an online simulation. This is one that you're actually going to be uh, doing hands-on with something around the house. Uh, I left a little bit of directions on that uh, when I put up the instructions originally, but uh, I'm just going to model for you a few of the steps in here, and then we're going to try and mess around with the Google Doc and see how hard it is to actually put the answers in on that, and we'll decide whether it makes more sense for you to try and uh, just do your answers on your own paper or print this out or if it's actually going to be doable to try and do it on the doc. So taking a look at the doc right here, um, we're going to be modeling radioactive decay. Uh, now I've got on here colored cubes because when I wrote this, I had just gotten in a whole lot of these uh, little colored math cubes. And so what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be uh, using pink for my protons because pink and proton both start with P. And blue for my neutrons, I'm going to think blutrons, which is lame, but that way I won't get them mixed up. So I'm going to start by coming into my doc here, and I'm going to just see if it will let me type in pink and blue. Now it wants me to start off by putting 40 neutrons and 30 protons in the center of my paper plate. Now, if it was a nucleus of an atom, of course, they'd all be mixed in all over the place. There wouldn't really be any rhyme or reason to it. Because we're going to be counting these, I'm going to try and keep these in groups of five to make it a little bit easier to count. So here I've got my paper plate cheat because I made a paper copy. 40 neutrons and 30 protons. So I'm going to need 30 pink. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5. If you're watching this in playback, this would be a really good part to uh, put in uh, 2x speed, so it goes faster for you. If you're tuned in live, you're just kind of stuck with me. Sorry about that. I guess you can, like, I don't know, go grab some beef jerky or something while you're waiting for me. So we need, did it say 40? Okay. 30 protons. So six groups of five. One, two, three, four, five. One more group. One, two, three, four, five. And then 40 of my blutrons. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next 15. Next 20. represents the nucleus of the atom I'm going to be looking at. Let's take a look at our next step. Okay, record the following information in the box above. This is nuclear notation. So here it wants me to record the atom's mass, which is the total number of protons and neutrons. So I could count by groups of five since I've got them set out as groups of five, or I could just, you know, keep in mind that 30 plus 40 means I'm going to have 70. So let's see how hard it is to actually get in here and change this. I'm going to click Edit. Keep my fingers crossed. Okay, that doesn't look like it's going to be too bad, especially since they gave me that there in the middle to kind of go by. So, oh, okay, let's see. I'm going to click my line tool. I'm 
going to pick Scribble. And I have no idea what color this is going to be. Let's just find out. So I should have a total of 70. Wow, that's jank. Check that out. Okay. Bottom, I need to do atomic number, which is just the number of protons. If I remember, my protons are pink. I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 of those. So 30 is going to go down here. Also jank, but, you know, could be worse. Uh, element symbol determined by the atomic number. So I need to look at this bottom number here to see what element I have. And I have got a uh, periodic table pulled up here. There's lots of periodic tables on the Internet. I like this one because it has pictures of things, and I like pictures because I'm a child. Uh, number 30 is the element zinc, and it has the symbol Z-N. So... that yet. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to put the symbol Z. And sure, that looks fantastic. I'm going to click Save and Close. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. Hey, look at that. That's fantastic. Okay, so that's not too bad. All right. Now, step four, I'm going to cite an alpha decay by removing two protons and two neutrons, and then record the new nuclear notation in the box below right. So it wants me to take the same nucleus from up here and put it down here. So it's going to be 70 over 30 Zn. I'm going to see if it will let me edit this one. Maybe. Oh, except that it's not going to give me a box to where I know where things are. Oh, yes, it does. Look at that crap. Cool. All right. I imagine if you're on a slightly faster computer, it should go a little bit quicker for you. So let's see. We had 70, which was my mass. That's not what I did. Let's try that again. 70, 30. Glorious. So getting back to my uh, direction, I'm simulating here an alpha particle uh, has a mass of four and a charge of two. So it says I'm going to take two neutrons and two protons. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to just remove two of these blutrons. I'm going to remove two of these protons. I'm going to kind of put these out in the middle so I remember that, hey, I've only got, I don't have complete groups of five anymore. So let's see what that's done to my nucleus. Now, the total mass of my nucleus is going to be four less than it was. So instead of 70, it's going to be 66. And my total charge, if I'm just counting my pink ones, I've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28. So what that's going to do to my atom, that I'm going to record down here. Let me edit that. So the mass will have decreased by 4. It was 70. It's going to be 66. And I can verify that by counting all my marbles on my plate right there. I used to have people do this lab with marbles. It was really not fun because they kept rolling around on them. Okay, do my scribble line. My mass is now 66 for my top number. And instead of 30 protons, I now just have 28. That's janky looking too. I don't care. Let's go see what element 28 is. Element number 28 is nickel. The symbol is N-I. Okay. I'm going to go capital N. Maybe. That's not quite what I did. So you can see that 
that a alpha decay does just that. It changes the mass, it decreases by 4, it changes the charge, it decreases by 2. Go on to step 5. Step 5 wants me to simulate a beta decay by replacing a neutron with a proton. I'm going to see if I can cheat. I've got this guy here selected, and I'm going to see if it will let me copy it. So I've got it selected. I'm going to hit Control c for copy. I'm going to come down and click on this dude. Let me... Ah, uh, look at that. So there's my second nucleus. This page so I can see it. I'm going to go through a beta decay. Beta decay, remember, is when one of the neutrons that's in the nucleus spits out an electron which causes it to turn into a proton. So it says I'm going to simulate that by replacing a neutron with a proton. So let's go back to my paper plate. So one of my neutrons here, I'm going to replace it with a proton that I took from off the plate. Now notice when I do that, the total number of particles in my nucleus does not change. So my top number, that mass number, shouldn't be any different. But my bottom number, if I'm just counting the protons, just the pink ones, it's actually increased by 1. So let's go make a note of that. So my third nucleus, 66 is still going to be my top number, but my bottom number is now going to be 29. And if this is as painfully slow for you as it is for me on your computer, you know, it might not be a bad idea to just try and find a print copy of this and uh, fill it in that way. Okay, so top number stays the same, 66. Back to scribble. to go to see what 29 is. Moment 29 is copper. The symbol is CU. So write big, big C, W, close it up. Okay. Now, it wants me to keep following the steps. Every time that there's an alpha decay, I'm going to be doing what I did that first time. I'm going to be removing two neutrons and two protons. Every time there's a beta decay, I'm going to be turning a neutron into a proton. And it wants me to go back to my first, second, and third nucleus here, so I'm going to see if it'll let me cheat on all three of those. I'm going to click on my first one here. I'm going to hit edit and copy. Let's come down and click this box here, and I'm going to hit edit and paste. Probably going to have to make it smaller. Oh yeah, that's way too big. That's okay. Maybe it will let me grab it and shrink the corners. That's beautiful. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with my second nucleus. I can either hit Control c for copy or I can go up to Edit. I'm going to hit Control c And to paste, I hit Control v white bean means paste, but it's a thing. No, that's the one we want. Shrink him down. Sweet. I do the same thing with my third one. Control C, and then select this. Control V. After this, they're not going to be huge anymore, so it shouldn't be quite as much of a pain. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the next one, but then I'm going to leave the rest for you guys to do. Now, I will tell you that if you do it right, then the very last thing you get should be cobalt-54. And it tells you that right down here. Okay, so if your tenth is, is cobalt-54, then you, you did it right. Okay, this guy here. Let's go ahead and do another alpha decay. So in alpha decay, remember, we're going to remove two protons and two neutrons. 
going back to my paper plate. So I'm going to pull off these two neutrons here and these two protons here. So let's do a count because let's pretend I'm bad at math and I have to count. That's really okay. So I'm going to count my blue ones first. I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I'm going to keep on counting. 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. I've got a total of 62 particles in my nucleus. Okay, which makes sense because 66 minus 4 will be 62. Now this is going to be the tricky part. Let's see if it gives me some kind of target to draw in here. Wow, that's tiny. See, I think I can magnify it though. I think I'm able to magnify glass thing here. Now let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go about 100%. Ah, let's go bigger than that. Let's go 200%. Ah, that's beautiful. All right. So I said it was 62 for my top number. Uh, I might have to pull it. Let me see what I had. No, it won't. Okay. So for my bottom number, I legit am going to have to come in here and recount my pink ones because I don't have any kind of long-term memory. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 27. So bottom number is 27. Let's go figure out what element that is. Element 27 from the cobalt. So CO. So big C. O. I say it should shrink down to the right size. Let's see if that works. Hey, that's nice. And you just keep on going. If it tells you to do an alpha, do what we did right there. If it tells you to do a beta, do the other kind. We're going to come down and look at number seven. Uh, number seven wants us to put the cubes back in their bags. We can use them for the other problems in the rest of the sections. But I will tell you that to a point, the whole point of this is getting you to where you can kind of see what math you should be doing with this from step to step to step. Uh, because once you get down to this, this is uranium 238, and I really don't want to count out 238 little bits. So I'm going to start off with uranium 238. Now, uranium, if I go find it on my periodic table, is element number 92. And it's just got the symbol big U. I don't need that. Go back. So I'm going to come in here and edit this as slowly as humanly possible. Thank you. Blow it up again. So you see what I'm saying about it really taking some patience to edit this stupid thing if you're going to do it that way. Blow it up to 200. That was 238 over 92. Take my scribble again. There's probably an easier way to do this, like with text boxes, but I don't know what it is. 238. Uh, that's terrible. Let's undo that. Eight over 92. Like I'm in kindergarten. Great big U. So I'll be starting this run with uranium 238, and I'm going to do what I did up front, unless I just really have a lot of marbles or a lot of little cubes with the mat. So in alpha, I put A. I remove the two from the top number and two from the bottom number. The top number stays the same goes up by one. And when I get to the end, the last one I should have, if I did it right, is lead 206. Okay, so that's that's a check you can do to make sure that you... If you got to lead 206, you did it right. If not, you probably made a mistake somewhere. You should go back and uh, check on those. Uh, the rest of this, 
is mostly just a few other problems. Now, some of this is going to combine what we're doing here with alpha and beta decay. Some of this is going to be balancing nuclear equations, which we covered in the last video. Uh, so here it says, an atom of U-235 absorbs a neutron to become U-236, which causes it to split into three neutrons, an atom of Ba-142, and another atom. So, I'm going to cheat because I really don't feel like filling all of these in on the thing, and I'm just going to go do this part on my paper so I can explain it a little bit faster and you're not having to sit here and watch me be old and slow. Actually, on the third page, if you print this thing out, So I'm starting off with U-235, so I'm going to have 235 on top, 92, since it's uranium, it's going to be big U. Now, a neutron, you might remember from a previous assignment or from your notes, a neutron has a mass of 1, charge of 0, and usually we just use like a little N to show that that's a neutron. Uh, now it's going to split and make three neutrons, and I can do that one of two ways. I can either go three times, and I can do the same thing that I have right here, or I can just go ahead and multiply these by three, which would give me three here, zero here, and I could do something like that, just to show myself, hey, I've got three of those. Now here's your arrow. So remember, when you're balancing nuclear equation, your mass numbers on the left have to add up to the same as what they do on the right. So let's see, this is barium-142, which means that 142 is going to be my top number. I'm not sure what element barium is, so let's look that up real quick. Barium is BA. There it is. Number 56. So bottom number is going to be 56. BA. And so, to figure out what this last mystery uh, particle is right here, we're going to get our total mass, which is 235 plus 1. So the top number is going to have, add up, have to add up to 236. On the bottom, I've got 92 plus 0, so the bottom number is going to be 92, which means that 3 plus 142 plus whatever that number up there is also have to add up to 236. And then all of these bottom numbers have to add up to 92, just like on the other side. So all you have to do is take 92 minus 56 to find that one, and then take 236 minus 142 minus 3 to find that top one. And then based on whatever that bottom number is, that tells you what the symbol is going to be for that one. Do you see a similar situation with the rest of the questions on this page? A few of them are going to make you think. Um, be really careful about reading this part right here. Okay? It's talking about iodine-131. It says that uh, exposure to I-131 by breathing or ingestion can cause cancer. Or death of cells, especially in the thyroid gland. But check this out. Read part C. It says that the same thing, the same iodine-131, can be used to treat thyroid cancer. And it says that giving larger doses can actually cause fewer cases of thyroid cancer. So this one right here, it wants you to speculate which means just take some guesses as to why is it that this same stuff right here, that if you get a little bit of it, it can give you cancer, but if you get a lot of it, it can actually treat cancer or it can prevent cancer. Why the heck? And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something real mean. You ready for this? Boom. There it is. That's right. Pulling out the big guns. Okay. I want you to think about it. Come up with some sentences. It doesn't have to be right. Just try and see if it makes sense. This would be like saying, okay, if you shoot me, 
it's bad for me. But if you shoot me a lot, it can actually be good for me. How is that possible? You think about it. And then the very last one here talks a little bit about nuclear fusion. Uh, it's another one where you've got some starting nucleons. I'm going to go ahead and help you out here because this first one right here, this usually gives people a hard time. Uh, deuterium is hydrogen 2, so it's going to have a mass of 2. Hydrogen has a charge of, whoop, the wind picked up on me. Hydrogen has a charge of 1. Ah, quit that. Oh, this is God telling me it's time to quit recording videos and go play outside. Okay, almost done. Mass of 2, charge of 1, that's hydrogen. This one right here, that's hydrogen 3, or tritium, so it's going to have a mass of 3 and a charge of 1. And so these two added together are going to make a neutron plus one more nuclei. Now the neutron we already know is going to be 1, 0, little n. So you've just got to figure out what that last product of that thing is. So I think I'm done. Got in under half an hour, so do the best you can on this. If you need help, uh, feel free to hit me up in one of my help desks or shoot me an email or leave a comment. Uh, this is this one and the other one from earlier this week, which should have taken you like that to finish. Those are both going to be due Monday night at midnight. So uh, good luck on that.